This episode of Dakota Destinations is presented by Schooneman Equipment Company. Here it comes. Oh, yeah! Woo! <laughs> that is a honey of a Red River Channel catfish with Captain Brad Durick coming up today on Midco Sports Network's Dakota Destinations. Oh yeah! Woo! Oh, good fish, good fish. That's what we're looking for right there. Welcome to Dakota Destinations. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. It's one of the best channel cat fisheries in all of the world, and it's right here in our backyard near Grand Forks, North Dakota. Today, we're on the water with Captain Brad Durick. Well, let's go see some river. Sure. The Red River is a tranquil scene on this summer day as we meander up the river, not far from downtown Grand Forks. We forget the hardship the river has brought during recent spring floods. In this form, the river is a peaceful place. In many ways, the red is underutilized, a hidden treasure in the catfishing circles. Now it's got clean water. The flooding has actually done beneficial because it brings fresh snags down. It brings, you know, nutrients in. It moves things around, piles it up. I mean, as humans, we think that's bad coming through our cities, but as animals, I mean, it's kind of the cleansing, so to speak. And, you know, when I first got into catfishing, we didn't get all the flooding we had. And yes, it is a pain, you know, three, four floods a year or getting close to floods a year, but uh, I could definitely tell quality of fish, at least in the Grand Forks area, the year we didn't have the flood. I thought the quality hmm. of fish was a little bit less than the years we do have floods. So there is a, you know, something playing in there. We like to see that. That's what we want. Gotta move this bait bucket. That's a big bait. Let's hope he's not just hanging on. We've been here about 10 min minutes, maybe less than 10 minutes. You ready? You bet. One more bite. Let's see what we've got Ooh. to offer. Whoa, there's a pretty good run, little That's run right there. Want. This fish giving you a pretty good tug well, here, Brad. Well, I'm letting him do his thing, too, a little bit, so. It's always the anticipation, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Very respectable. Nice fish right there. Captain Brad Durick is the foremost expert on catfishing on the red. An account executive by day, he spends more time fishing channel cats and studying their behavior than any angler in the region. Some days you see him tied to sunken timber. Other days he may be just yards from the boat landing. You see, Brad knows that along this stretch of river, there are a lot of catfish and big catfish. I was really turned on by the fact that I could drive three miles, put a boat in the water after work, go catch big fish that fought hard, get home and get to bed at a human time and get up and go to work again in the morning. That was the initial really turn on to it's the whole good, thing. Pretty big attraction actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean you get off at 5, you could be fishing at 5.15 if you were ready. You could be home by 10 and still get a full four hours yeah. on the water clocked. That to me was, well, yep. was, it was a big deal. Play it flat. Come on, buddy. The goals have changed. I mean it used to be all about the yeah. fighting the fish, then it became all about watching the other person fight the fish and get that rush. And now it's become beat the fish. How can I catch more fish, bigger fish, and make sure that when everybody's having a good day, I'm having a great day. And when everybody's having a bad day, I'm having a okay day. Brad admits he was a late bloomer into fishing. He was 22 when he started. Have a nice life. But just a year later, he found himself hooked on chasing cats on the red. Now it takes up most of his free time. And just when you think he's seen everything, these fish and this river produce another surprise. 
gonna go with not that big, but we'll find out. Come on, buddy, put the brakes on. Good rod, Ben. Oh, not bad not at bad. all. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad for an opening act. Got him? Yep. Yes, I do. Okay. Oh, I know what happened. <laughs> Is that a different bait that's in there? We, you, we caught us a stone cat, which is why it was popping. He hit the stone cat. How about that? There's a new one. I've never done that before. We caught the little stone cat. We saw the rod bouncing as if it was a smaller catfish yep. hitting it. It was a stone cat. This cat went after this little stone cat. Ever seen that before? Never seen it before. First time. How Unfo about that? Unfortunately for that stone cat, he has an unpleasant future. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't many days when Brad is left to wonder. More times than not, he knows where the fish are biting and why. He's got four different sections of this particular structure covered. Yep, what we're doing is we're kind of covering fast water on one side and we're covering cover on the other. And on those tough days, why they aren't. And that hobby that first brought them to the river quickly became a passion. You know, I had a question and, I, and nobody wrote about it. So I scoured books and the internet and asked, asked the guy who wrote the books. And he didn't have the answer, no offense to him. And he even said, I just never really thought about it and looked into it. So I started digging and looking through and thank goodness I had catch records. When we come back, we'll tell you more about Brad's knowledge of catfishing and his upcoming book. Dakota Destinations, presented by Schooneman Equipment Company. We're on the Red River with Captain Brad Durick. I want these rods folding in half as fast just at a steady pace. A Grand Forks resident who has made a science out of catfishing, with the Red River yeah. being his laboratory. First question that started all this was, in 2010, every time it would rain, the river would go up three to five feet, and within a couple weeks, it dropped three to five feet. Where did the fish go? What is happening to the fish? And in those days, you know, you had your laundry list of spots that you wanted to hit, and some days your spots would work, and other days your spots wouldn't work. Well, when the water went up, they didn't work, and as the water fell, they didn't work, and then they would work again. So at what point, there, there's gotta be a middle ground in there, and what is causing the change? So that was question number one. And kind of by accident, weren't catching fish, and just saw this snag and went off on the edge of the water and saw this uh, little snag, and popped in some bait and just started catching fish immediately. Spot I'd never been to before, customers in the boat. And we're just hammering big fish out of here. And I was like, why is this spot good? And I was getting ready to cast a rod and I noticed that the cottonwoods were dumping cotton. And when stuff goes in the river, it always follows the main channel. Makes sense. And I was watching the cotton as it was going down the channel and where we were was right next to the channel and it was actually moving at about half the speed. And at that point, I developed sec the secondary current theory, hmm. where the fish didn't want to fight the heavy current, but they didn't want to be very far away from it. They were just off of it. It's like a current brake line. It's a current brake line, is exactly what it is. And, you know, the cotton told me the story, but, you know, that was a pretty big breakthrough for me. And 2011, if you keep score, was high water all year. In fact, I believe I fished with you that year. Yep. And we had a lot of the same, only the water was high. And we proved out, me and the other guides that knew about it, proved out that secondary current theory pretty solid. It's gonna be a good fish, I'm guessing. There you go. There's a fish on. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that tug. That's that half mile cast I threw. That was out to the <laughs> deep, deep edge, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Look at that rod bend. Tell me if you need that green rod moved. 
fly. We're doing so far so good. Hopefully he should go up to the current and go right over the top. Brad had now crossed the line. He was developing new information to a growing group of cat fishermen who were hungry for more insight. That's a nice fish. Feels like a nice fish. But answers led to more questions. So Brad studied questions about falling water temps, changes in the barometric pressure, and the impacts right, of thunderstorms. And then came another big discovery. Oh, yeah! And I actually had to go back to the drawing board and I developed a whole other pattern called lateral movement. <laughs> and it's basically taking everything from the first four or five projects and instead of making drastic upstream downstream moves, you find kind of that home base of the fish and as the c conditions change, you go from the middle to the outside to the outside, shallow water versus deep water. So versus you're like cross-sectioning exactly, a certain location. Exactly. I've basically, if you find that section, you break it into a cross section, and instead of fishing it upstream, downstream, you can fish it side to side. Once that came together, I started testing on that. We had some pretty negative conditions last fall. I found a mile of river that had everything a catfish would love. And depending if it was a cold stretch of weather, they would be out of the current and in tight in the wood. And if the water warmed up on a warm day, they would move, and I'm not joking, 10, 15, 20 feet, but they would be in the faster water. And it was a matter of what the current was doing, how fast it was, how aggressive they were, and it actually got it mapped out side to side. I spent the better part of a month in one mile of a river, and you would even anchor on the spots the same, but you would say, today they're gonna bite over here, or today they're gonna bite over here. <laughs> and it's, uh, no kidding. It, it's really working out to be a pretty neat deal. Yeah. And I've tested it in other parts of the country and it's yeah. working. You know, a man is serious about catfishing when he has a tattoo <laughs> on his shoulder. What's the story behind the tattoo? I looked for years and years and years for a good catfish tattoo and couldn't yeah. find one. I finally talked to an artist and he said, just bring me some pictures. I'll get you what you want. So I handed him four photographs of various fish and I had a painting that I took a picture of and I said, the painting has the fins where I want it. Make it look like this, this color, and make it look mean. True to form, Brad puts us on fish in every area we hit on this day. We fish fast water, slack water, shallow water. And toward the end of the day, Brad's curiosity is getting the best of him. So we anchor directly in the middle of the river, a spot most anglers would cruise by without even trying. And here again, his intuition is spot on. We totally shifted gears on this one. Totally, we're mid-river. We're fishing about as fast a current as we can find right in the middle of the river. And you're fighting this fish against the current. Yeah, he's just kind of hanging there. He's gonna put the brakes like, whoa, whoa. Look at that rod bend. He's gonna put the brakes on here in a second. Woo! Take my jolly sweets on this guy. I hope he's as big as he's telling me. Is he telling you he's got some girth to him? Right when I picked it up, he did, but now I think he's just kind of hanging out down there. The story is if we get him vertical and he decides to take a run upstream, that's when the real story comes. That's when you can gauge truly yeah, you can't, how big it might be. You can't tell an 8-pounder from a 28-pounder reeling it in because he could be swimming with you just nonchalantly. When they when they get vertical and when they get vertical and bulldog on you, that's when that's when the real truth test comes. I love the anticipation. I tend to fight them a little lower than a lot of people. Yeah. Because I find if they get get you on the surface, that's when gear breaks. If gear's going to give out, it's going to be on the surface. So I'll, I always hold them a little lower. He's not getting vertical. He's just kind of making me pull him in. Ooh, ooh. Oh not, yeah. There's what I mean when he gets on the surface. Yep. Oh nice yeah. Fish. That's just a fat fish. Yes. And now that you've got him netted, you yep. might want to go get the other one that's hanging in the back of the boat. Now. We got another one. Look at here. Look at here. Look at this rod bend, folks. 
right after that fish is brought into the boat. We got a real solid rod bent here. And the fish on. Brad decided to change directions, totally change directions. One nice cat in the boat, and a second one being fought right now. Oh yeah, this fish is dogging me. We'll just move this fish over here for now. What do you need, Dan? Anything? Nope, we're good. We're clear of the second line. Okay. Outside of the second line. World-class catfish fishery in our backyard. We've covered barely Fish up. three miles from the city proper of Grand Forks. Oh, yeah! <laughs> How about that for a double? <laughs> I'll take that. Check these out. Nice double channel catfish on the Red River. Right in the backyard of Grand Forks, Brad. As the crow flies, we're maybe two miles out of town. Maybe. Coming up next on Dakota Destinations, Captain Brad's knowledge hits the bookshelves. Dakota Destinations, presented by Schooneman Equipment Company. Scoot over here and try the dead water for once, okay. just quick. I say what your gut is telling you is probably going to be our best bet. Because when you're talking with Captain Brad, the gut is connected to the catfish mind. Well, something like that. <laughs> Brad has become a leading voice in catfishing. Mind. He's being heard by tackle manufacturers that specialize in the sport. And last fall, he published his first book, Cracking the Channel Catfish Code. It's an in-depth look at his findings here on his laboratory, the Red River, and his subject, channel catfish. Did, Ed, did you ever think when you were 22 and first getting into it, you would fast forward to this point now where you're so deep into the catfishing and channel catfishing on the Red River that you're looked at as an expert in the field and putting a piece of information out there that'll be fresh to a lot of anglers. I wouldn't even have said that when I was 32. Really, yeah. um, you know, 22, that first 10 years was just all about having fun. And then one thing just kind of progressed to another. I mean, I didn't even plan on, I mean, guiding was something I never even thought of. It just kind of happened. And then as the research happened and you start meeting people and realize, Wow, I might be onto something here. You know, one thing kind of progresses to another thing, and you know, I'm I'm glad I'm helping people catch fish. I mean, I, I hope a lot of this research enlightens people in some of the finer points. Brad, we've changed our approach a little bit. As you can see, we are not tied up to some flooded timber, but we're working the deeper side of it. Right. We're, you know, anybody who ever listens to me talk or whatever says never, I always say never fish the back of a snag. We're not fishing the back of a snag. We're using the snag as our anchor. It just happens to be here and we want to fish back here. So, yeah. you know, rather than hoist 22 pounds of steel up when we're done, we're just going to unclip our gripper from the tree. So yeah. um, the, the, the fact that we're in a snag really means nothing right now. What have you seen today that has led us to work some more deep water here? Well, we started out, we were looking at fast water and then we, you know, everything the last few days has gone shallow side, tight to the wood, but every stop we've made, we've pulled them off the fast, deeper water, which is where they're supposed to be. So now this, this last move we made, we, we abandoned the shallow water and we, we're, we're going for the big fish now. We're gonna probably not catch as many fish, but we're gonna get bigger fish. I love the sounds of that. Let's get a rod bender right now. <laughs> Nationally, the catfish world is hungry. I mean, just in the last three years, the amount oh, yeah. of products, the amount of 
specialty things that are coming out for catfish anglers. The amount of press it's getting. I mean, it's it's the fledgling market of fishing. And you're having a voice in the product development line too, aren't you? A little one. Um, I do a little bit of product testing for for some companies. Uh, I've designed a, I've designed a net. Uh, it was basically dismantling different nets to get to what I want. <laughs> but they manufactured it now, so that's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Ready? Thank you, girl. Thank you for the fun. Sweet. Come on. Oh, that was the one. Oh, yeah. Brad, that's a nice fish. That's nice. That's what you're here for. There we go. Get a release? Yep. Go ahead. Two at a time? Two at a time. Double release. Hey, yeah, girls. Captain Brad Durick is based out of Grand Forks, North Dakota. To learn more or book a trip with Brad, go to redrivercatfish.com. Coming up next on Dakota Destinations, we'll tell you the story behind a hunting documentary filmed in southwestern North Dakota.